Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. Welcome back everyone. This channel now has almost 95,000 followers. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you that watches my daily videos. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, it's free to do so. All you have to do is click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's delve into the details this morning. We're gonna go over kind of an educational video this morning and on an outlook on the look ahead plus the Christmas forecast. So, but today we've got some severe weather to talk about. We had all the storms yesterday in Oklahoma and Arkansas into Dallas last night. That is continuing to push further into central Texas, down towards San Antonio and Austin into the Waco area. And now the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted a, a marginal risk for severe weather extending from the San Antonio area into Shreveport, as well as New Orleans, getting into Jackson, Mississippi, Montgomery, Alabama, and then as well as uh, Pensacola. So a pretty good swath of severe storms that's continued pushing uh, further off to the southeast. But they've also highlighted a slight risk for severe, severe weather where they've elevated that risk because it's going to be tapping into some of that daytime heating of the day by the time the storms get all the way down into the Houston metroplex. So those storms could be more severe and actually include some tornadoes along with it. So let's take a look at the overall tornado outlook that the Storm Prediction Center has actually elevated. This is the newest update. They just increased this to a 5% in and around the Houston area, the Pasadena area, the Beaumont area, getting into Sugarland as well as the Woodlands. You could see a tornado spin up with this activity later on this afternoon and even into San Antonio, going in New Orleans as well as Corpus Christi, uh, Baton Rouge and Mobile, Alabama is not out of the question. You could still possibly see an isolated spin up or two as this activity will hit towards the peak heating of the day. And you saw those temperatures. You're starting off 70 degrees, which is almost unheard of for this time of year. So let's take a look at the overall hazard map for this morning where some of the winter weather advisories are. And well to the north, you can see essentially in places into Washington and Idaho and getting into Montana where they've got some winter storm warnings and watches. But there's also going to be a snowstorm out here into uh, New England uh, today where they've got those winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings into places into uh, upstate New York, getting into Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, as well as into Maine. And we'll, we'll go over the details on that particular system. But the last three days, this is what the rain amounts have, have transpired in pretty good swath. I mean, with some welcome rains into California, uh, much of Washington going into Portland and Seattle where they've seen a ton of rain. Unfortunately, the midsection of the country where they've been extremely dry, this can't really buy a drop. I mean, it's just the setup lately has just been missing you guys, unfortunately. But they had some heavier rain extending yesterday, especially into uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Picked up a, a good amount of rain yesterday. You can see this swath of a good two to four inches where we highlighted right around the areas that got hit from that tornado activity, unfortunately. And some of that heavier rain extended down into uh, Austin, and that's where they're getting the heavier rains now as this continues uh, pushing across. But you can see the graph here in the top right-hand corner on where you may live in the United States or where the, some of the precipitation has fallen over the last uh, three days. So let's kind of zoom into that snowstorm up into uh, the New England area because we take a look at the overall 3K NAM uh, model as far as this afternoon goes. We've got some snow showers breaking out into uh, Michigan and upstate New York, going into Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, going into Maine. And these are gonna be pretty you know, light snow transfer into some moderate snow. It's gonna be plenty cold enough to snow in this neck of the woods as all this down here to the south is gonna be that severe weather and some, some of that stronger storms that they're gonna be dealing with later on this afternoon. And as we get into the overnight hours into Sunday morning, it's still gonna be some heavier snow flying into uh, the ski country. This, this is welcome, welcome snow for you guys up there. So it'll be laying down a pretty good, pretty good groundwork uh, over the next uh, 24, 36 hours. So let's go over some of the totals and what this snowfall uh, you know, would bring. A little bit about, about a dusting into Chicago, about a quarter of an inch. You start getting into say the Kalamazoo area, about an inch and a half into Grand Rapids, 
uh, 2.8 inches, Lansing about two and a half inches, Flint, Flint uh, 2.8. You get up here into Green Bay, about a half inch. So it starts to pick up as you continue to push across into Buffalo, almost two inches, Rochester, about three inches, into Toronto, about four inches. You go over here to Watertown, five inches, Syracuse, three inches, uh, you know, Saratoga Springs, about three inches, Albany, almost an inch and a half here, and Hanover, about three to four inches, Burlington, Vermont, you're talking five, six inches of snow from this deal. Uh, you can, but you can see some of those sporadic, heavier amounts, isolated amounts. You could see a good, you know, eight to ten and a foot of snow is not out of the question in some of these mountains of, of Vermont. Uh, but if we swing over, you see nothing in New York City or Philly from this particular snow event. But places get into Albany, uh, about you know one and a half inches. Boston could pick up a little bit of a dusting from this system, maybe up in an inch. Uh, but you haven't really seen that much snowfall in that neck of the woods this, this year so far. But a little higher amounts as you go into uh, places into Maine, about six inches into Portland. You get up here to Bangor, about three inches. Up here to uh, Montreal, about four inches. And Quebec, about two inches of snowfall from that particular snowstorm. But it's got some cold air back behind it because you're going to be waking up on Sunday morning, the 19th. And it's going to feel a little bit more like December, right? It's been extremely warm December. Now we're seeing some negative temperatures trying to creep in into the upper portions of uh, the Dakotas and to uh, Minnesota. But freezing, there's your freezing temperatures anywhere in the blue area. And of course, down to the south where they're getting some of that rain and that severe weather. But take a look at the, the temperature down here in West Texas, 26 degrees. All these areas are going to be below freezing in West Texas and to the north. And what we're looking at is, is this disturbance. It's actually going to be getting its act together by the time we get into Sunday morning. So here's the setup on the 500 millibar. We do have an upper level low with that cold air in place. That's going to be continuing to drain from the north. We got a, a, a you know, pretty good gusty wind coming up today. The winds are going to die down, but we have a secondary upper level low that's going to be traversing across and, tr and getting its act together and having a little bit of a lift in the atmosphere. And if we zoom in on the 3K, uh, 3K NAM kilometer uh, model, it's got the lift with the cold air in place and we could be looking at some snow starting to fly. This situation, we've got a warm air aloft and dry air at the surface. So as it, as it falls as rain, the dry air will cool uh, the snow pellets and that will f fall into the form of snow in the higher elevations in the Davis Mountains. Most people don't realize we have you got mountains in Texas. You really do. These elevations are three to upper to almost 8,000 feet at some of these peaks. And yes, you could see some accumulating snow out here in far west Texas tomorrow morning on uh, on sunday morning but as the system continues to push across it's got some dry air to deal with in the central part of the uh, the uh, texas temperature is going to be in the 40s and it's trying it's going to try to snow it's going to try to sleet but a lot of it's not going to hit the ground and and then so but it's don't be at you know it's don't be surprised even at 40 degrees some of these you know ice pellets might see flying in the atmosphere and it sparkled around central Texas, even possibly into North Texas with temperatures at 40, 45 degrees because of that dry air aloft, nothing accumulating or sticking or anything like that. But, you know, don't be surprised if you look up and say, hey, is that actually sleep? Is that is that is that is is that what I'm looking at here? It's like, yeah, it actually could be right. So so I just wanted to kind of give you an update on that. But yeah, we could look see some uh, snow in uh, far west Texas coming up on Sunday morning. And you can see some of these uh, snow amounts about three inches in Alpine. Uh, but yeah, sporadic amounts of three, four five inches is probably not out of the question right around that bullseye. The atmosphere is 26 degrees. It's going to be plenty cold enough and it's going to be having a lot of lift. But, you know, as we get towards into central Texas, you're, you, you know, you go into the you know, heat of the day and your temperatures are going to be well into the 40s. So, yeah, some of that could fall just sprinkled, you know, ice pellets or sleet may fall out of the sky. Uh, now, well, let's take a look at this low pressure. So as we go into that Monday time frame, that same low pressure will continue moving across. It actually gets into the Gulf of Mexico. And now, of course, if it was August or September, we'd be deeply concerned about this system trying to form into some tropical entity and probably really developing 
pretty strongly because they've got a lot of warm sea surface temperatures out here in the middle of the Gulf. But it's got a low pressure system and this could bring up some heavier rains and some stronger storms in its past. So you're talking places into New Orleans, getting into Monday. So they're going to see some storms today. It's going to be pretty stormy as this upper level low will continue to, uh, moving across, pumping in that some of that Gulf moisture. So it's going to be an ample of uh, area where they're going to be picking up a lot of precipitation in and around that upper level low you know spreading into, into mississippi and in alabama and georgia eventually getting into the carolinas as we get into that tuesday uh time frame and this will continue uh moving across on wednesday there's that low pressure system about a thousand millibar right off the coast of uh, north carolina and all the indications from the european and the gfs model really kind of take this out to sea. I mean, there's, it's, of course, it's still five days away, but I mean, you know, it's not out of the question. It could try to turn up back up north because we do have a developing a negative NAO, but the most predominantly and the most widespread view, a lot of the ensemble members actually have this take, a, you know, the good chunk of this precipitation uh, safely uh, off, to, off to sea. And as you can see in the midsection of the country, by the time we get into that 22nd time frame, look at the high pressures in the place. That gives you an idea of some of the ridge or high pressure starting to build back in the central part of the U.S. where all the some of the colder anomalies are well off to the West Coast. And those much needed rain showers will continue uh, for them and the places then to you know, the Pacific Northwest, as well as out here in the Western regions of, of California. And that's the same deal on Thursday that continues pushing across much needed rain will continue for California and to try to push into the desert Southwest. But look at all the warmth, warmth. I mean, the 540 line is well to the north in Minnesota and to, and to Wisconsin. That just indications of some, of some ridging building back into the midsection of the country and some above average temperature anomalies. So let's kind of zoom into this and figure out, you know, let's talk about the, the MJO, which is the Manageuli Oscillation. I'm going to try to break this down into layman's terms on how all this works and why December kind of unfolded as it does, as it did. So let's take a look at this. It essentially was moving into phase six. I mean, this, we've been in phase six of the MJO. And if you look, if you look at what phase six brings, that's a very warm pattern, right? Which is exactly what we've been getting. And it's been slowing. It's been slowing in phase six. It's been taking its sweet time. That's why we've been predominantly warm. It's finally starting to get hints going into phase seven, which is a much different look. And if it ever gotten to phase seven in December, we would have a much different December. But that has just not been the case. We've been predominantly stuck in phase six. But even for the next week, you can see this red. This is the 18th right here in phase six this continues predominantly goes into uh, phase seven but the problem is now that we're getting past the middle of the month in december phase seven in december is kind of a, a warmer phase now for the central and to the eastern two-thirds of the u.s and that's predominantly what we're seeing we're starting to see as it goes into phase seven some much cooler conditions starting to come back for the West and the Pacific Northwest and portions of the North. You can see as we move forward on the, on the European model, by the 27th or the 28th, it's indications we go out of phase six. Now we're into basically the heart of phase seven. So that's around the 27th time frame. That's two days after Christmas, right? What does phase seven bring you? It brings you above average temperatures and into the, uh, the south and to much of the eastern two thirds of the US. It brings cooler conditions back in off west and the Pacific Northwest and starting to filter in much colder conditions into Montana and to the Dakotas. And if we extend the view, I really do like the Australian access model. It's comprised of 33 members of the MJO. And this continues, and this is no guarantee this is going to happen, but this is just what the models are saying currently right now. You can see the, M the MJO is in uh, you know phase seven, December 26, kind of matches the European, right? In the heart of phase seven, if we extend the view and go deeper into the, the rest of the year, end of the year into New Year's, goes into January 15th, it goes into phase eight, and phase one, what does that look like? A much different view of much colder conditions for the south and the eastern two thirds of the US. The same thing with phase one, if it gets into phase one in the middle of January, 
This would obviously be much colder conditions as well for the north and the central two thirds of the US. So that's kind of the look going forward of what some of the models are saying currently right now. But predominantly for the next week, we remain in a, a, a well above average to a, a phase of phase six and phase seven. But there are hints it goes into a little bit of a colder pattern as we get towards the end of the month. So let's take a look at the anomalies and how this kind of matches up, right? So let's take a look at the 23rd, phase six, phase seven, man, well above average, right? I mean, we're talking, this is kind of unheard of for December, the 23rd of the month, we're looking at 20 to 25 degrees, a temperature anomalies for a good chunk of the central and Eastern two thirds of the US. By that Thursday time frame, there's that low pressure system that's still close enough that's bringing the rain showers on the East Coast. That's why you're predominantly going to be below average. But once that moves out, you'll, that be, that'll that just be replaced with above average temperatures. So for your Christmas Eve forecast, <laughs> it's plenty warm, guys. It is plenty warm with 20 to 30 degrees above average temperature anomalies. I know this is probably not what you want to hear. Right, it's supposed to be cold on Christmas, but that is just not going to happen. And then, as we look at the Christmas Day forecast again, I mean, it's still well above average—a good twenty to you know twenty to five degrees above average for your temperature anomalies. But check this out. This is how this works, right? As we move into the twenty seventh of the month, I mean, this is almost verbatim following the MJO, right? If it goes into phase seven, by the time we get on that 27th and 28th time frame, look what phase seven looks like, right? You've got above average temperature anomalies in Texas, above average temperature anomalies in the Southeast and to the East Coast with well below average temperature anomalies coming back for the West. Look at that, it almost matches it perfectly, right? I mean, that's how this works. And you saw if it continues moving like it shows, we should have colder conditions filtering in going into the end of the end of the year. And especially as we go into January, if it goes into that phase one, phase two, uh, it, you know, phase phase get, gets into phase eight and phase one, we should have much colder conditions. But that's not a guarantee. That's just what it looks like currently right now. But going forward for the next 10 days, this is the setup of what we have. And it's almost matching it verbatim by the time we get into the 27th of the month. So that's 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 some crazy stuff. So I wanted to break that down for you. Leave a comment below if you have any other questions on that. But let's take a look at the overall snowfall totals for the next, uh, tw you know, between now and Christmas. There's that snow event for well to the north. That's where the colder air is going to be traversing up into Canada along the boundary here. There's your totals that we went over in detail. And there's the heavier totals out west where they're going to have those below average temperature anomalies and the snow will still fly in the ski resorts out there. And that's where the rain is going to be out as well with these systems coming across the below average temperature anomalies on the far west coast. And then there's the heavier rains set up with that low pressure system that will bring in the severe storms today that will eventually get off into the Gulf of Mexico and then push off into uh, off the Carolina coast by the time we get into that Wednesday, Thursday time frame. And then a lot of indications continue for this to push it well off to sea while you remain dry in the midsection of the country. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.